Hi, and welcome to week six, reading Old Testament prophecy. So we've moved on from poetry uh, and narrative, and now we're going to look at prophecy uh, as a different type of genre that has a few different rules on how we do interpretation. Now our goals this week are to create a hermeneutical methodology for the interpretation of biblical texts. Hang on a second, just thought of a note. Um, there we go, sorry. So to, whoa, that went backwards. There we go, create a hermeneutical methodology for the interpretation of biblical texts. Second, to apply interpretive methods in the evaluation of a, pro a prophetic text and to demonstrate an understanding for the importance of historical context in correctly interpreting proce uh, prophecy. And that's really one of the things that is truly critical to understanding prophecy. Um, prophecy was not written um, 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 years ago uh, in a vacuum. It was written as a, as a prophecy through a prophet from God to a people group um, with an intention. Now, it may have multiple fulfillments, but our job is to understand it within its own historical context. Uh, and then if we can go from there, we, we might, but we have to start at the beginning. Who was it written by? Who was it written for? And what was it written about? Uh, then to analyze an assigned biblical passage and apply the hermeneutical meaning to a contemporary situation. So to bring our hermeneutical process uh, together, understanding first the historical context and then understanding how it can be applied into our lives. So assignment 6.1 is applying historical context to prophecy. So exploring uh, the historical context of a passage is essential to understanding the meaning intended by the initial author. I want you to create a three to four page paper exploring the meaning of Isaiah 9 verses 2 to 7. The paper should include an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. The body of the paper should unpack the historical setting of the prophet Isaiah and the context for the song of thanksgiving. The body should also discuss the initial fulfillment of the prophecy in chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, and the ultimate, ultimate fulfill, uh, fulfillment in the New Testament. The conclusion of the paper should summarize the findings of the paper and offer an application for the modern church. Outside research is expected for this paper. So I'm wanting you to do a full analysis. Use all of the tools uh, that you have learned so far this semester, but a chunk, the first chunk of, of the paper really needs to set Isaiah 9 in its historical context. What is happening around Isaiah and who is he talking to and why is he talking to them? And so what is the historical context? And then what is the meaning of this prophecy? And then finally, um, how is this pro prophecy understood later, several hundred years later in the New Testament? This paper is due next Monday at midnight. And as I mentioned, I'm looking for the, the strong use um, of outside research. Then we have assignment 6.2, which is a types of prophecy worksheet. According to Klein, there are several types of prophecy. So I want you to complete the attached worksheet listing 10 types of prophecy. Then provide a biblical example for each and an explanation of why your biblical example fits the category. Now, a, a hundred on this assignment uh, is going to give a lot of depth as to what passage you, you chose and how it fits the type, and a strong use of Klein or other outside research uh, identifying the 10 types of prophecy and what are the key components to each type of prophecy. I'm looking for footnoting, uh, or MLA formatting uh, and the appropriate use of a bibliography 
uh, and a conclusion as to how this an un understanding of these types of prophecy can be used in an interpretive process. So be sure to include a conclusion discussing what you learned and adding personal reflection. Now here's an example, Jeremiah 28 verses 12 to 14. After the prophet Hananiah, Hananiah had broken the yoke off the neck of, of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place you will get a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I will even give him control over the wild animals. So what's the point? Where, what is the context of this? Why did Hananiah break a wooden uh, yoke off of Jeremiah? And why was a wooden yoke on Jeremiah? A wooden yoke is something, uh, and that's where understanding historical context, what's a yoke? Uh, so to understand this passage, you have to back up. First, understand what is a yoke. Understand why it was on Jer Jeremiah's neck in the first place. Why did Hananiah break it? And who are all these nations uh, that are going to be put under the king of Babylon? And who's Nebuchadnezzar? So unless we understand history, we don't really understand prophecy. Uh, so this passage includes a pr prophetic commission, go tell Hananiah. Uh, in addition, the prophecy gives a reason for the disaster. You have done this, and therefore I, God, am going to do that. The disaster is that all nations will be subjugated to the rule of Babylon, which has the theological I implications in that uh, Babylon uh, is under the control of God, even they don't, even though they don't worship God. He has the ability, the sovereign control over those who don't even believe in Him, to guide their actions. So God is putting the nations under the control of Babylon, uh, and these are Israel and Judah. The historical context is a time when Hananiah re uh, represented the message of peace being proclaimed by the lying prophets, encouraging resistance to ba Babylon, and false hopes of a quick end to the political crisis, a restoration not only of the temple vessels, but of King Jehoiakim to the throne. And so what's happening here is it was a God's rule, was a, a um, yoke of wood, something light and easy to manage, but God is replacing that, and it is God putting the people under the rule of Babylon, not the Babylonians coming in, but God is actually the actor behind taking the Israelites into a harsh uh, time, a iron where it's heavy and difficult on the neck versus wood that is light. Uh, and so God is placing the Israelites and the Judites under the heavy-handed control of the Babylonians. Uh, so I want you to be able to do an analysis, understanding each aspect of the historical context, uh, and then what does it mean uh, to us today? How should we understand that? Um, so then we have a discussion post to evaluate modern prophecy. I want you to write a one-page post using biblical support and outside research, answering the questions, and your opinion, does prophecy still exist today? That, that's a tough one. Uh, on the one hand, there are biblical passages that you could look up and use that say um, that they, the canon is closed and that there is no um, further word of God uh, that is necessary or needed. Um, but on the other hand, you know, God does God speak through individuals today, and what does that look like? And depending upon what church tra tradition um, you follow or were raised in, uh, you might very well have a different answer uh, on does prophecy still exist today? If not, I want you to support your reason why there is no prophecy today. If so, 
I want you to determine whether, how you would determine whether the prophecy is truly from God, which means you're going to need to research the Bible and understand what the Bible says about prophecy and when it can be trusted and when it can't and under what circumstances. Uh, and then also research in the Bible, uh, does prophecy still exist today? And come to your own conclusion. Now, because the people may come to this uh, assignment with very different ideas, some strong, strongly felt, uh, this is an important and emotional topic. So please engage with differing opinions or arguments without condemning positions. Rather, use discussions to dig deeper into each other's position. And in fact, I would love for classmates who are on polar opposites to engage with one another um, to understand their arguments better. Uh, and that might nuance or inform your own position. As always, our first post is due on Friday at midnight with ongoing interaction and discussion over the weekend, concluding Monday at midnight. Um, as always, please put, put your name on your files. That helps me if I have to download them. Uh, email or call me with any questions. Uh, you can see by the background that I'm still in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, weather delayed my departure, so I won't be leaving until Wednesday. Uh, but Wednesday and Thursday of this week, uh, I will be somewhat out of touch as I'm flying from here to Antigua. Uh, but by Thursday evening, I should be in Antigua and more accessible. Um, I will check emails um, after I land at each stop uh, and uh, answer any questions that I get emailed. But have a wonderful week. I look forward to hearing what you come up with about prophecy, and I'll talk to you soon.